and welcome to today's webinar, 10 Tips to Improve Your Organic Traffic. My name is Christina. I'm a Junior Digital Marketing Manager at Searchmetrics, and I am responsible for our webinars, and I'm a part of the marketing team. And I'm very happy to welcome Lukas Zelezny today, a well-known SEO expert and consultant. We did already some webinars together, and it's always a pleasure to listen to your presentations, Lukas. Thank you very much, and hello, everybody. <laughs> so just a short introduction about such metrics for all of you who don't know our software. We help um, enable marketers to reach all of their SEO and content marketing goals with our comprehensive suite of software and services. If you would like to find out more, there's a link on the right side to the to our suite, or you can contact me anytime. Then a short introduction to our webinar console. So at your window, you see several boxes right now. On the right side, there's a Q&A box where you can send us your questions, which Lukas and me will answer at the end of the webinar. Then there's a link, uh, there's a box with several links where you find links that Lukas will talk about during his presentation. And you can also find a link to our next webinar about the ranking factor EAT, where you can sign up. And on the left side, you see the both of us and our information. And on the bottom, there's a webinar help guide, which you can read in case you have any problems. But I always recommend to refresh the browser first if you have any problems with the sound or if the slides aren't working, then it usually solves the problem. And yes, we will send you an email with the recording of this webinar by the end of this week or maybe on Monday, as it is already kind of the end of the week. So you will receive it on Monday. And then I have a short thing that I would like to ask you for. So in the end of this webinar, a survey pops up and it would be really great if you could take part and give us your feedback. Okay, and now I hand over to you, Lukas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us in this crazy time of, uh, of, of, of um, lockdown. Um, but I think uh, it's a great opportunity, great uh, a moment and great situation to see when you're staying at home, you can go to a webinar and you can learn something online. I will try to make this interesting. I will also try to give you something, uh, something that you can uh, use later. Uh, so please stay with us. And and yeah, and I hope that you will find this useful. Um, and once again, thank you for having me, Search Metrics, and thank you for joining our conversation today. Uh, so, ten tips to improve organic traffic. Let me start from low hanging fruits and the Search Console. So, first of all, I am never using Search Console natively or very rarely. I'm always using Search Console through API. Through, um, through API and through Data Studio or through any other software. Why? Because I can see much, much deeper. So here is an example. You can see that um, in this uh, slide, I'm showing how I'm giving access uh, that Search Console can uh, give data to the Data Studio or Data Studio can access data in Search Console. And obviously there, um, there is a question, are you, you are about uh, to add data source to this report, you need to say yes, I want, I am very sure, and so on and so on. And then I can start filtering in this um, in this Data Studio project, all the data that Search Console is giving to Data Studio. There is lots of benefits of that. First benefit is that it's self-updating system. Uh, data Studio every 15 minutes is pulling new, uh, new data, refresh that connection, and is pulling data from Search Console. Second of all, uh, as you will see uh, in a second, there is much, much deeper view uh, through the API, then through the normal website. So uh, this is our complete list of queries, and you can see that there is like, uh, uh, maybe this is quite small, but I can tell you that there is like, you know, a query, landing page, impressions, uh, URL clicks, and click-through rate, all the metrics that we really need. And um, if 
you would be pulling this data through a normal search console, you would only get up to 1,000 rows. Because we are using Data Studio, you can get pretty much unlimited number of rows. I have some websites that when I export, I have 250,000 rows or longer. The only problem is how much you can load into your Excel. Um, so, and now the snapshot is ready. And you can see that uh, we have query, landing page impressions, clicks, and click to rate. And the next slide is a very important slide because this data is not sorted properly. This data is still a bit chaotic. We have URLs, we have queries or keywords, we have impressions, click, and click to rate. But how can we group this? Excel, that everyone should be familiar with, is giving us a function which is called double sort or, or multiple sort. So what I'm doing here, it is I'm sorting by landing page and then immediately by impressions. You can do the same or you can say, sort this by landing page and immediately by clicks. You know, everyone got own Kung Fu. I'm going with impressions because I'm looking for keywords that are visible and doesn't deliver yet much traffic. And this is an anim GIF that is showing how nicely it's sorted. URL is changing when e impressions hit one. So you can see that impressions are going up to one, and then new URL is coming, and then new URL is coming, and then new URL is coming. What else we can do with this data? We can do a very nice pivot. And you take a look here. This is a pivot that I done by URLs and then keywords. So in my strategy, most of the time, URLs are the most important part of the strategy, not keyword per se. Keywords are second. First, I want to know what are the URLs that are the most relevant, and then I want to go to keywords. And here is a URL which is called Find SEO Clients, 5,283 impressions and 51 clicks. Average click to rate is 159. So now what we can see here, it is uh, keywords, how to get SEO clients without cold calling. And I had um, on zelezny.uk, which is my private website, 640 impressions and 47 clicks. That's a very good uh, click to rate, 7.34. But the next keyword is about how to find SEO clients, and it doesn't perform anywhere close to the keyword number one. It's only 525 impressions with two clicks. So click to rate is 0.38. Why it's like that? Probably this keyword is ranking too low to get traffic. And I can start optimizing that page that is here um, for that keywords, how to find SEO clients or how to get SEO clients, which is another one with 888 impressions and only two clicks. I hope that this is uh, pretty straightforward. And, uh, and, 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 and and you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, now the next, this is the second example, uh, SEO snapshot method. So pretty much what we're talking about right now, uh, a little like um, um, inception, I would say. Uh, so there is a URL which is called SEO snapshot method. And you can see keywords SEO snapshot, Lucas Jalesne site, SEO quick check, SEO status. The, the only relevant keyword I see here is number one, a SEO snapshot. But again, I can see that there is only nine clicks in a given period of time and 363 impressions. That's quite uh, quite low in terms of clicks and click to rate. So what I need to do, I need to optimize that page, a SEO snapshot method for that keyword, a SEO snapshot. And I will not be going into this, um, uh, how to do the optimization because this is the, old, good SEO, on-page SEO, uh, you know, see how your title tag looks like, see how your H1 looks like, maybe add additional two, three paragraph of text, maybe add alt tags relevant to the keyword, and so on, and so on, and so on. Put some external backlinks, put some internal interlinks to that page. Um, plenty of ideas. Uh, that's why, you know, that's our very, very basic thing. So I hope that uh, we don't need to go through this. And now I wanted to show you an example where I was implementing this idea uh, to live. There is um, my little baby called socialmedia.pl. Um, that's the domain I acquired in the end of 2015, I think, or 16. I don't remember right now. 
And you can see here uh, how the traffic looks like. And I split that traffic into three areas. You can see acquisition. So it was quite flat. Then I started doing content marketing. It was quite okay-ish, but it was, again, like very quickly flat. And then I done a snapshot, and it's nicely boosted. Uh, you can see that after three weeks of starting a snapshot methodology, I could see a nice growth in traffic. If you're asking me about the, um, uh, the volume of sessions, then obviously it's around right now around 10 to 12,000 or, uh, organic sessions, maybe up to 15,000 overall on that social media PL. I'm trying to be as transparent as I can. Uh, so, you know, it's maybe not crazy high traffic, but it's like 12,000 or 15,000 of these that you may have or may not have. So, you know, it didn't cost me that much. Um, even acquisition of the domain was relatively cheap. Content, obviously, I had to to write or I had to outsource, and then optimization. And worth to mention one thing: if you're working with your content writers, is good if they know already the principles of SEO, the principles how to write content that will not only be good for users but also for a search engine. So, a couple of simple rules. And if your um, content writer don't know how to do this. Give them a training, give them a lesson, because you will save lots of time, they will save lots of times, and overall you will save lots of resources. So as a summary, use keywords that are ranking quite well, not first, but quite well, leverage quality traffic and play Google game. And now I said something that I will give you uh, things that, uh, are, uh, that are here. So take a look, here is uh, data studio which is uh, an evaluation of uh, of where I went after okay so you know I started from very simple uh, data studio and then this is where I end up I call this um, SEO keyword generic keyword researcher and you can see here a uh, data from another website that I own is SEO wordpress.pl Somehow I'm, I'm doing lots of Polish websites because I was born in Poland and overall cost of content would be lower. So do this test is, is, is much more cost efficient. Now, what you can do, if you open this link, seo.london slash data studio, then you will be able to see that report. And moreover, what you will be able to do is to copy this and apply your own data from Search Console. And thanks to that, you will see straight away what are the good keywords, what are, you see the green one, that's our keywords with very high click to rate, but not quite yet positions, uh, which countries you are getting traffic, and so on, and so on, and so on. So I hope you will find this useful. And if someone will see this on your desktop computer, then we'll get jealous that they were not attending that webinar. So next one, snapshot approach to keyword research. Uh, another another approach from external data point, and I will be using search metrics for this. Surprise, surprise! Um, and this is a scenario that always hit me when I was starting new role. Okay, so. Um, imagine this situation, you joined the company, you went through all this SEO, um, uh, SEO interview stages, now you joined and you don't want to start uh, from oh, excuses that SEO is taking so much time, it's like long and, and so on and so on. So let's get to the points quite quickly. So. In 2012, switch, and first of all, I was like, okay, show me keywords that already rank. Boom. Searchmetrics showed me. Next slide. Uh, narrow this list to keywords that are ranking on the first page between position 2 and 10. And the search volume is not too high, not too low. Why not too high? Because we want to exclude all the third-party brands. We do not want to use brands of uh, companies that are not relevant, uh, that are not our brand. Yeah. So U-Switch is a price comparison website. There is lots of pages about um, mobile prices, and you may have Vodafone, uh, Virgin Mobiles, O2, 3, EE, the same with a gas and electricity. You may have EDF, you may have British Gas, and so on and so on. We don't want to think about these keywords because if someone is typing Vodafone, then then is looking for Vodafone. So let's get out of these keywords. These keywords normally have very high search volume, so we obviously 
um, removing uh, these keywords doing this filtering. Once we filter this, we have another list which is much better. And now take a look. Decimony deals, that's one page. Loans but credits, that's another page. iPhone 5 has gold, that's another page. Energy comparison, that's another page. You have a lovely diversification of different pages. It's not like you're choosing three, four, five pages and you are trying to rank on five keywords and then you are, you know, it's about the scale and it's about diversification of URLs. So when we you have this, let's go to the theory. You know, here is a slingshot SEO uh, keyword um, uh, click to rate uh, the, the organic distribution curve. And obviously, everyone can challenge me right now and saying, like, how do you know that when I'm on the first position, then I have 18% of click to rate and on the second position, 10% of click to rate? It's not really about the, 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 the values. It's pretty much about to, to understand the difference between being on position one or two and being on position seven, eight, nine, ten. If you are on position seven, eight, nine, ten, it pretty much doesn't make any difference in the impact. If you are on position one or two, or if you went from position two to one, that's a huge impact. 10% uh, versus 18%, yeah? So take a look. Um, if you will do a quick math, and you will you will try to calculate the visits. We're taking 18% multiply by 18, uh, 8 for one search volume, and this is roughly estimated. And again, that's not visit, that's more like an index, uh, 3,294. If you would be for a whole month on the position two, this 10% multiply by 18, 8 for one, that's 1,893 visits index, or or something like that. So the the boost is almost double. So we can gain 1,400 points or, or visits or whatever metric we will put there if we will jump from position two to one and we will stay there for a whole month. So I'm preparing a, a bit of calculation and this calculation I will also share with you in a spreadsheet. So we have here um, click to rate that you saw before, 18, 10, 7, 4, 3, and so on. And then here are some keywords that are sorted by first search volume. And you will see that this, the, 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 the list of keywords is different. And then we are sorted this by our calculated metrics, which is traffic index difference. Going back, once again, TI is a search volume of current position. So search volume multiplied by click to rate of the position. TI max is an SEO utopia. How high you would rank, how, high, how much you would get, how much points you would get if you would be on the position one. And the difference is current state minus uh, utopian state, so position one minus current state. So having this, I just created a list and I sorted this by TI diff, so traffic index difference. You can see here we have also two columns with traffic index, traffic index max, and you will get this spreadsheet so we can put your own data and you can recalculate this for your own website. The only thing you need is a search volume in keyword positions. So you can see the difference in sort. That's the keyword by search volume and keyword by TI diff. And here is another URL worth to mention, Zelezny, not Zelensky, not Zeleny, zelezny.uk slash snapshot. And you can download this to uh, your hard drive and you can play with this on your computer. So conclusion, um, optimization process, again, old, good, classic SEO, uh, modification of title tag, uh, alt image name, and so on and so on. Uh, when to use this? When you starting working on organic traffic, when you have a client who is coming to you and saying like, oh my gosh, I had three SEOs and they've been crap. Why you are better? And you are like, take a seat. I will show you why I'm better. And then um, for websites with established history of ranking in SERPs. So this unfortunately doesn't work for a new website because you don't have a data. And when you click, quickly need to prove that SEO is worth of money spending and, and resources. Conclusion, you're dealing with keywords that already rank, you're leveraging quality traffic, you're utilizing multiple URLs, you're playing a um, search engine game, and you're delivering quick results.
So that was about external snapshot. And then we're going to another one, which is link building through brand tracking. Uh, I hope that some of you already track your brand mentions. If you're not, I wanted to show you why it's important to track your brand mentions. So let's step back from my CEO for a moment and an anecdote from my own private life. If you are born in Poland and you have a Czech surname and you're living in UK, what could go wrong? I was always either Zelensky, either Zelensky, either Zelenish, and so on and so on. Everybody was giving me a different name and a uh, different surname. Yeah, uh, the same in Poland because this is not Polish uh, surname. So I was like, look, this is simple. I'm Łukasz Grzegorz Żelezny, and this is so simple to spell it, and people still couldn't understand how to spell it. So I really wanted to move back from this, and I was like, okay, so maybe I should change my name to something uh, like a very sophisticated, uncommon name, and very, very common, um, very sophisticated, uncommon name, and very common surname. And I was like, yeah, let's go with Archibald Smith. And I was about to do this, and then I noticed that there was actually Archibald Smith, who was a Scottish lawyer, and we, I think, have even we look a bit similar. But, but Archie is dead now, but he's quite good in SEO. His Wikipedia page is on the on the first result, so not a bad SEO as for someone who died in 1872 in London. And I was like, okay, so maybe not. Maybe this is not a good idea to change your name and surname to Archibald Smith. And I stayed with Lucas Zelezny. And thanks God, I then decided, uh, discovered why it's good to have a crazy name and surname. Because every time someone will write Lucas Zelezny, then potentially it is about something about me. So I started setting up system. Track your brand. You can use Talkwalker, Brand24, Fresh Web Explorer, Google Alerts that rarely works, but are free. Uh, so you can you can use plenty of these tools, and I would like to focus on Brand24. Um, why? Because of the price structure. Brand24, I think, cost around 49 pounds in the, in the, in the basic uh, package. And unfortunately, Talk Walkers start from 445 monthly, and you need to sign contract for two years, I think. So knowing that, Knowing that, I started building a project and I loaded lots of keywords like uh, my name and surname with typo mistakes, without typo mistakes, into Brand24. I created that project end of 2013, seven years ago, and it's still working there after seven years and still pulling data and still informing me. I have connected this. Uh, reports to Slack, so every time there, there is a mention uh, on Twitter, Facebook, or any other sources, then I'm getting uh, alert on my mobile. And this is a screenshot for USwitch, where I also created a project for USwitch. And you can see here um, how many mentions and what the reach was. So uh, you can also see these mentions and reach in the form of infographic. But what does it really mean that there is a mention? Take a look. Uh, stay on top of your work with Łukasz Żelezny podcast on Time Camp. And if you go to the Time Camp website, you can see another Wednesday, another episode of our podcast. Are you ready for another dose of great tips? I'm talking with Lukas Zelezny, CEO, a social media speaker and owner of Zelezny UK and the head of organic acquisition of uswitch.com. Those days, I was working for uswitch.com, and we could catch that someone mentioned uswitch.com, and we could also see, go the, on the website and see that this is a mention that is unlinked. So we the owner of Time Camp website to link to our website. And thanks to that, we're converting mentions to links. Now, uh, there is a one caveat. To, to say it will work only when you have a crazy name and surname or non-dictionary brand name. So what is non-dictionary brand name? Search metrics, Zoopla, um, Yahoo, Google, uh, let's say uh, Netflix. That's our non-dictionary non brand name. 
If someone is saying Netflix, then pretty much 99.9% .9 we can be sure it's talking about that Netflix. It's not talking about that his net flixed and he lost connection, for example. And um, on the other hand, you have brand names like Booking.com, uh, Chip Hall, uh, uh, Weather.com. Unfortunately, if someone mentioned Booking, it can be about Booking.com or not necessarily. If they mention Booking.com, then it's probably about Booking.com. But we cannot find the brand mentions without an .com and so on and so on. If someone will say, uh, for example, uh, cheap holidays, that can be various meanings yeah, and contexts. So uh, next one. We can also see an influence um, of social media authors who is influencing Britain's Got Talent is the highest uh, in connection to Uswitch. Why? Because when I was taking the screenshots, uh, Uswitch was a sponsor of Britain's Got Talent. So Britain's Got Talent was mentioning Uswitch a lot. And here is my project. You can see keywords Zelensky, Zelensky, and so on and so on. Uh, with spice, without space, with Polish characters, without. And again, I could see that there was about 52 mentions uh, on uh, on uh, uh, on the day of first of uh, May or March, I don't see from here. And overall, there was two thousand five hundred seventy-five mentions. Majority of uh, mentions from Twitter, but also from Facebook, blogs, and so on and so on. And I could go to specific one, and here is one of the very good example I mentioned um, uh, on, on 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 my I saw on my on my account. It's a mention that happened on ibusiness.ru, and this mention is in Russian. And you may say, like, whoa, how it catched? Because if you see here, it's Lukas Zelezny, and it's written in the Latin alphabet, the same in use with you switch. So because of that, I get an alert, and, you know, like, I don't speak Russian uh, very well. Uh, I need a couple of shots and then I am more fluent. Uh, I can understand Russians quite well, okay? I can understand Russian quite well, but I cannot read. I cannot read. Uh, and I'm speaking also very, very basic. But I could see that and I was like, oh my gosh. So I can approach this guy and say like, Spasiba Balshoi, thank you very much for mentioning me. Can you make uh, this, uh, you, this, this name and surname a URL to my website. And most of the people would be like very happy that you mentioned that, uh, th that you noticed that they mentioned you and they will be linking. Not everyone, but even if half of the people that you approached will link to you. So uh, then after a week, you have a couple of extra links. So it's very, very prominent strategy. Next topic, research with social media help. For this, uh, we will use BuzzSumo. Uh, I hope that you are using BuzzSumo. Basumo is great. It's like a Google on uh, Google on on uh, like a flip, flipped concept of Google. So you're writing a keyword like properties in London, and you can then sort this by mentions um, by by mentions or by shares on social media. So. What I'm doing most of the time, I'm not sorting this by Facebook engagement because Facebook engagement is a bit tricky. Lots of uh, very, very high numbers are because of the paid campaign. We don't want to see the paid campaign. We want to organically understand what are the pieces of content that are performing very well. So you can see here that you have like uh, properties in London. And what I was really interested in is like six factors influencing um, uh, the UK property market in 2018. This article was um, posted in December 26, 2017. What that say to me? That end of 2020, I should probably write something like six factor influencing the UK property market in 2021. Why? Because Let's skip Facebook, which had 666, that's the number, uh, of shares. But there is also Twitter, which had four, almost 500 shares. So this type of content been very popular and started circulating nicely on social media. So you can see what was popular, what people like to share, 
And based on that data, you can go forward and you can start writing years of content. I hope that this is pretty clear. And then we have um, the one that we that we like, six factors influencing the UK property market in 2018. And take a look. This is the article for from Guardian, I think. And and yeah, and you can go forward with this, and you can analyze this article, how they wrote this uh, in 2000, end of 2017, pointing to 2018, and how you could learn from this example to make as good or better article end of 2019. And you may say like, okay, right now we are in May. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. The, the the end of the year will come very fast. You can start preparing for that. You can start analyzing content, and then you can start pushing that content. Uh, when the time will come, when, when the December come, I think, by the way, 27th of December is a bit too late. I would go with 15th of December, because 27th of December is actually, you know, the break, and people are not thinking about internet and so on. Or even, maybe even first or second week of December, that would be a good idea to post. Another one, hashtag tracking to find PR links opportunities. What does it mean? So there are two holy grails of um, our, our hashtags, and that's a journal request and PR request. That's our hashtags that are used by journalists when they are looking for somebody to give a comment or to leave some insights and so on and so on. So take a look. Uh, I am using a software called If This Then That, and I'm saying if you tweet from search for journal request um, and word social, then send me an email to Lukash at Zelesnico UK. So every time some journalist will say, like, I'm looking for a social media expert uh, to give me a feedback about current situation with Twitter, hash journal request. We have social in social media expert and journal request, I'm getting alert, I can react. Another another, uh, another example, uh, if new tweet from search for journal request marketing. So I'm filtering, I don't want all the journal requests because I'm not an expert in, for example, car market or, or uh, pharmacy. I am only operating in the marketing area. I have another very good example, take a look. If new tweet from search, for journal request Polish, minus nails, I don't want to get uh, questions about polishing nails because I know nothing about polishing nails. I want to have a request about something like Polish minority living in London uh, after Brexit and so on and so on and so on, so I can give some insights. That's our only examples, and you can obviously go much deeper than that. And here is how I configured the alert. So alert co contain um, username uh, and the text, and then I'm taking screenshot, uh, like it would be 90s. And you see, I have so many alerts here, um, and I will show you one tweet that came to my uh, to my uh, to my inbox, this tweet is called uh, is written by Ribbon Fish Team. How can hashtag publishers do hashtag marketing better? Expert needed to comment on, uh, for an article and ebook. Hash PR request, hash journal request. So we have here word marketing hash marketing uh, in the first sentence how can publishers do marketing better and we have word journal request and pr request that's why we have two conditions that we ask for the alert being fired and i'm receiving email about this and i can respond and say like hey guys you know what um i, I am more than happy to help you here are my insights here is a link to my website voila yeah Oh, it's a bit time consuming, but it's very prominent and it doesn't cost much. Uh, or maybe I can even say it's a free, free fee. Now, um, next tactic is boost your WordPress. Boost your WordPress with plugins. I wanted to mention a few plugins that I'm using with Passion. They are on the edge of uh, on page optimization and growth hacking, but I hope you will find this useful. So first plugin is one signal, web, uh, free web push uh, notifications. I don't know how long this web push notification will be working, but for now they are working. And I wanted to show you how, how it looks from the back end. So this is my how, how I increase number of people that subscribe to web push notifications. 
on social media and on Zelazny UK. You can see that it's nicely growing. And um, and this is how the panel, the setup panel from um, from OnPay, um, OneSignal uh, as a plugin inside your WordPress looks like. So you need to create account on OneSignal.com. You need to install that plugin. You need to enter the API key. And that's pretty much it. And from now on, you will get this kind of lovely extra thing, one signal push, not push notification, send notification on post update. So when you're editing posts, there will be this thingy that you can tick and you can press publish. And that is the moment when push notification is fired. You may ask, what is the push notification? I have a screenshot here. You can see that little pop-up that you can see on, on Chrome uh, that, that is um, showing in the corner. It's great concept to make sure that you are also using UTM tags because you can then track better the performance of these uh, campaigns. So that's one signal plugin. Another one is <coughs> WPA Autolinker, a very good plugin where you can load a CSV file pretty much. And you can see I just done here um, a very, very simple list, only two keywords, Twitter. Every time Twitter exists in the text, always link to that page. Every time Facebook exists in the text, word Facebook always link to that page. So that will give you an opportunity to start linking consistently between pages the same way like Wikipedia is doing. If you go to Wikipedia and you see word London, it's always going to London page. Word England is always going to London uh, to England page. And word India will always go to India page. Yeah, And this is the same concept here. If we will have word Facebook, it always be linked to that specific URL. And here is like a, a piece of Polish text, but you can see that word Twitter and word Facebook automatically been linked. So you have one central point uh, with links, and you can always uh, do some updates there. You don't need to remember about your um, whole uh, internal link structure. You don't need to go one by one article and so on and so on. Another thing, uh, Smoosh, that's the plugin that will help you to compress images. And uh, and images are smaller. Images will load faster. Uh, you can see that here uh, I have a screenshot when I smushed 1,748 images, total saving 47 megabytes. But this is not really about saving space on server. It's really about load time. So I uh, saved 41% of the space. And that means that my images will be loading faster. Another one, Gonzalez plugin. That's a plugin written by a Polish programmer, which is uh, helping you to achieve better score, uh, better page speed score and, and pingdom score. And then finally, one of my favorite plugins, out optimized by Frank Futa uh, Gusnes, or Gusens, Gusens. I'm not very good in uh, in French or uh, or <clears throat> Dutch, but doesn't matter. The plugin is awesome. The plugin is compressing CSS. The plugin is compressing JavaScript. The plugin is compressing HTML. There is lots of functions, but if you really don't want to play with lots of functions, you can go easily with a simple one. Tick, 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 done. And then you can crawl your website, and you will see that there is absolutely no issues with, with how the website is uh, pulling. Um, the last uh, two first is appending on copy. This is pretty much classic uh, when you highlighting a piece of text, press right mouse, copy. That is the moment when your website will add additional code that this piece of text was taken from that website, uh, that website, yeah? So you can see something like that on many, many big publishers that someone is highlighting text pressing right mouse, and the, 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 the link to original article is added. And the last one, a bit controversial, 404 to 301, that is that you don't have to deal anymore with 404 errors, because all of them will be redirected 301 to homepage. It's not recommended uh, tactic, but I have never seen any, any negative. Also, you are regaining a link juice that's been pointed from external website 
two websites with 404 that doesn't exist. You're just re-grabbing this link juice. Another tactic, cloud. Let's talk about cloud. So guys, if you have a website, if you have a business, if you have a client, always recommend this guys, um, a special client, um, a good solution for uh, as a serving platform. I am using SiteGround and I'm, I'm saying this completely impartial. I also know that WP Engine is doing absolutely phenomenal job. But when mo most of the websites these days are on Magento, on WordPress, uh, sometimes on Drupal, and I would say that's the, that's the majority. So these servers are optimized, at least SiteGround is optimized for this kind of um, CMS. So uh, you can see here um, I have uh, I, I I have like lots of different uh, caching caching level, which always uh, make website faster. And here is an example. Webs A before um, enabling caching and then after you can see load time went from 8.4 to 3.1, and then another example here load went from 8.7 to 3.4, and you can see that the number of requests didn't change, total page speed didn't change, but somehow server been able to respond faster. So the conclusion of this part is simple. Never try to save money on server. Don't go with crappy solutions, $10 a year, because that is killing, killing, killing thing, and uh, that is not healthy for, for, for performance of your website. Finally, we're going into links and social profiles. And I know how you may react. What links from social profiles that doesn't count? This is not what we're going to do right now. This is completely different approach. So let me start from this. I have SEO.London, which is a new website. And, and I haven't had many links. What I could do to my LinkedIn, and I could see that there is so many websites that is linking to my LinkedIn profile rather than to my website. Okay, uh, so how I how I done this? First of all, I wanted to repoint links from LinkedIn to my uh, SEO.London website, and I went into Majestic and I said, "Show me what are what is the link profile to my SEO uh, page on LinkedIn." And I can see here that I have 141 external backlinks from 20 domains. That's a lot. That's a lot of domains that is linking to my profile rather than to me. Uh, and what are these domains? Site visibility, remoters, um, SMXL, TimeCamp. That's our pages that uh, are owned by people I know personally. And I know that if I will approach them and I will say like, listen, you're linking to my LinkedIn, could you repoint that link to my website? Then they will be absolutely fine with this. Here is an example from remoters. And you can see here that we have LinkedIn as a link here um, on the first uh, screenshot. LinkedIn is uh, a link. And, and obviously, after my polite, uh, friend, friendly intervention, the, the, the other link to my website been added. And here is another one from AccuRanker, Lucas Zelezny, Zelezny UK, LinkedIn. So I could ask them to change Zelezny UK to a London. And LinkedIn, if they want, they can remove or they can keep. And then you see, when I typed SEO.London, I could see nice boost uh, from nine domains to 11 domains. That was after a couple of days. Right now, I think I have around 100 domains linking to my website. And most of them are uh, very good quality. And then I went deeper. I was like, OK, what about Facebook? Two referring domains, six external links. And then Twitter, and I almost get a heart attack. 164 domains, 37,507 URLs, external backlinks. I'm like, what's going on here? Why so many? And I successively, step by step, I started repointing them to my website. And then finally, my, my Facebook, uh, one of the fan page, seven, uh, seven domains and 75 uh, external backlinks. 
So why it works so well? First of all, you must know who links uh, who links to your social media profile. Like I said, I knew these people. Half of them I knew quite well. We met on conferences. We've been hanging together, and so on and so on. It's easy to switch link from social media profile to your website. It's relevant uh, to switch from social media profile to your website. It's organic, kind of, and you can save tremendous amount of time. So that was about social media and links. And now we're going into merge, a very simple tactic, uh, I think very prominent. So um, merge subdomains into subfolder. No questions. I have two clients when I done this and the result been really, really good. So I had one client, he wanted to get a, extra traffic. And I said, look, you have blog on the subdomain and we need to move this into slash blog slash. And he was like, why? Because I was like, because there is, I believe, and again, this is belief, uh, that there is some kind of dilution of the domain authority. When you have blog on subdomain, people linking there and so on and so on. So he was like, you know what? Let's go even, even, even further. I was like, what do you mean? I don't want to have this into slash blog. I want to have this all into root folder. I was like, wow, okay, if you really want to have this into root folder, we can do this. We moved all the articles from blog dot to root folder, and then we done the proper 301s and take a look. This is where he is right now. I mean, this is 2018, but you can trust me that he is quite flat after. So that didn't work at all for him, any SEO strategy before, and then here, he had a nice boost uh, and and uh, he was able to beat his competitors. The second example is a website that been a job portal and the, the owner also been, I never seen such a well-optimized website. There was very little issues, but they were still not ranking. So what we decided to do was to move forums into forums. The forums been um, a part of the website that was working under the uh, forum uh, script. So we moved uh, forums to slash forums, and this is where we end up. Take a look. This is the moment where we moved, and this is like a decline, but then it stabilized somewhere here. And that means that uh, they still are 50% above where they've been through whole 2018 year. So. That's our simple, small things that can change uh, a landscape a lot. And then finally, results. Uh, so here, here are two results. One of this you saw, um, that's the client who came uh, with a migration. And here is a stable SEO, which is nicely measured by such metrics. And that's, um, we have still 12 minutes, so 126 slides. And that's the last one. So just wanted to say a big, big, big thank you. And now I'm ready for your questions and I hope that I will be able to answer them. Yeah, thank you very much, Lucas. It was very interesting to get an overview of all of these useful tools that you can use to optimize your SEO performance. It was really, I learned a lot and I think our audience as well. So Thank we you. actually have one question currently and Alex is asking, are there any further information or further material for the first topic you talked about, how to connect Search mm -hmm. Console and Data Studio like you did? Um, so Alex, I think uh, YouTube would help you. Uh, but on the other hand, it's very, 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 very simple. So you shouldn't have any problems. If you would have problems, then obviously, you know, YouTube, I think there is pretty much everything. When I, when I have uh, problems with anything, I'm always YouTubing. So, so YouTube. Uh, the, additionally, you know, we can also have a catch up uh, online uh, via LinkedIn and you know I can I can try to explain more uh, but but yeah this is pretty much where I am okay and then there's another question by Klaus so at first he mm -hmm. says great presentation 
And Thank are you. there some hints you can give? Are there some hints you can give for offline local companies like craftsmen, which they should do first steps to reach visitors? Okay, uh, so, um, look, look offline. Oh, hold on, let me yes, read that question. Yes, offline local companies. Okay, so look, uh, I have. I uh, I think you you falling in the same area that my uh, per personal not personal but my dry cleaning uh, guy. Uh, so there was uh, there, there is a dry cleaning guy and he's like such a lovely guy, and I wanted to help him, so I created for him a listing on Google Maps. Uh, I would recommend you the same. Listing on Google Maps, you can create a very simple website with uh, Google Site Creator, and then you can track your 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 performance on Google Maps. Because, like you said, you are offline and you are local, then Google Maps would potentially works the best. Uh, and if you really want to go broader, you would need to think about a proper website. Hope that answer okay. answered the question. So then the next question by Ellie. Can you explain more about redirecting 404 to your site's homepage, please? How is this not detrimental? Um, well, so it's not detrimental because I done an experiment and I was checking this um, in terms of SEO performance. Um, there are two ways. First is uh, you can do this through HT Access. You can say HT Access every time there is a 404 error, just re redirect this on homepage. The second thing is that you can do this through plugin. Why I done this mainly on Social Media PL because Social Media PL had before different content. I bought domain but not content, and I started from scratch. Now, all the links been pointing to articles that anymore doesn't exist. So instead of picking up every link one by one and redirecting this link to homepage or to on the relevant article, I just put 404 to 301 uh, plugin and that redirected uh, this um, uh, this links to homepage. It's it's not for everybody because like UX experience is absolutely crap because someone is trying to reach address that doesn't exist and he or she is landing on the home page. It's absolutely rubbish uh, experience, but you can kind of get this um, link juice repointed to the home page or to any other page. So I hope that mm -hmm. that is answering question. Yeah. So um, we have two more questions by Femi. Um, the first question is, what are your thoughts on having a WordPress site built in an iframe? Would there be crawling issues? Well, the, the, I wouldn't go, this is not about the crawling issues. Um, you can go with, uh, uh, with a headless CMS, but don't go with an iframes. Iframes generally are really, really old school solution and it's not about crawling. It's like you are the web, the website that you will be showing WordPress uh, in the website on which you're showing WordPress um, on inside the iframe doesn't benefit in any way from the fact that WordPress is in the iframe because you can put any other website. You can put like uh, whatever, like Yahoo News into the iframe and and that's it so don't go this way definitely mm -hmm. okay good to know so and then the second question in terms of dedicated hosting would you say siteground is the best you've worked with i would say siteground is the best uh i wasn't working that much with wp engine only on the clients uh, websites and it was also good but I feel like um, with WP Engine is a bit more pricey than SiteGround. And also SiteGround is not perfect, but it's value for money. And, and, and once again, this is the best uh, for, for WordPress, the solution for WordPress I was working on, yet still affordable. So I, I am using, you're saying dedicated hosting. I would rather say uh, cloud 
um, elastic cloud that they can easily increase uh, the size. We okay, have more great. Questions. Femi already said, yeah, but we already received the thank you for your detailed explanation. And um, now, yeah, Detlef said that he had tried to download your keyword researcher, but the download is only possible as a PDF, PDF and can it be downloaded as an Excel spreadsheet? Um, it can be. It definitely can be. <laughs> I, will, I will try to send this to you uh, later, and then you can, you can share this together with the presentation in email. Yeah, we can um, send it around in our follow-up emails as well. Yeah. OK. Then I would like to say thank you very much to you, Lucas, again. It was great to have the webinar with you and listening to your presentation. And thank you very much to the audience for tuning in. If you have any other questions, you can just write us anytime and contact us. Thank you very much. That was a pleasure and honor to be here. And guys, stay safe in this uh, very unusual time and hope we will catch up next time. And by the way, you can feel free to add me on LinkedIn so we can always have a further conversation if any of you. Remember, I have a crazy name and surname, so it's very easy to find me. Lukasz Zelezny. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.